you suffer from chronic CFED or can't focus energy drain? Try over-the-counter Vibrant. One tablet contains the same caffeine as a cup of coffee, but without the calories or coffee breath. Vibrant. Caffeine, not coffee. Taking Vibrant may result in a lack of drowsiness, improved productivity, and better cash flow from decreased coffee spending. Unexpected job promotions have been associated with Vibrant. Vibrant may decrease the urge to zone out, doze off, or exhibit signs of slacking. All jokes aside, always read the label, take only as directed, and limit caffeine as it may cause real side effects. Not for children under age 12. Blog Talk Radio. And I 
weaknesses come from God. Come from black Jesus. Black white. Black.
My home girl got a credit card scam. She got a scholarship to college, but she don't give a damn. And the bush got a black woman wishing. She sends it on the phone with the news in the pan. I know your woman, I could throw your woman. You feel like the universe owes your woman. Oh, the anticipation. Hoping you could make it. Women don't prosper, change their education. But you're talented and can't handle it. And your home girl can't be your manager. 365 times four plus more. Can't get it right, Timmy. Do you got the stamina? But ain't no money like fast money. Even today I'm considered a crash dummy. A rapper chase the start of how can I fast forward my accolades better than all them? But why I'm so sad? Walking around with them blue faces. They say I'm dead on my luck, getting something I gotta have. Blue faces. I hit the bank today and tell them color me bad. Blue faces. Get a new money. And it's breaking me down to the top. I love God. I love bees. I love drink. I love me. I love potions in the deep. I love women. Don't look at little broke home, maybe. Broke home, baby. You know the poverty stricken, the little broke born, baby. Broke born, baby. Somebody said can't drink American, they show it's crazy. And I said, why? Then he looked me in the eye and said, homie, you messed up. You're breaking on good luck, you're wishing for miracles. Living through it's your kind of hysterical. Set up for everything, complain about everything. Save your soul, pack my world in front of me. Your project ain't it. I live in a hut. You're living to keep warm, I'm living to pay rent. I paid my way through. Plan I lied, you played your way through. Dealing with Wi-Fi, for each yourself and talking to strangers. Same thing go for the one she came with. We all came on the boat looking for hope. And all you can say is that you're looking for dope. Huh? She says ain't no compromise. Huh? Moves with shackle feet, Cape Town, 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 uh, Cornwall, Kenny, all morning with the mixed dash for a triple digit skirt, morning with the mixed dash for a triple digit skirt, skirt, Cornwall, Kenny. So many plays on me, I finesse Kind of same views with some sex I lost a lot of love for missionary This is the first time I react Me and Top is like a Kobe and Bill A father figure play with him, you get killed Play with me and he and keep you himself He the eat the mafia of the West Losing silence, yeah, we chugging like that Acting violence, yeah, we chugging like that I did a lot of dumb things in my past Love would give me hope and how to relax Damn chest for the new 9-11 Almost time I seen another play crash Two chest for the brand new Mattel Rock a rock about the battle project Cause you got it slow and dripping and go Me, I'm about to let my hair down the hose I'm about to let his hair down the hose Half feeling that's a big in the show Might blow the whole no way in your soul Might tell him one more people like punch Down where he got a Grammy this year That's what, then he do what he wants Level two, level two, so I'm not done You ain't got to tell me that I'm the one I can put a rapper on my support Guarantee something that none that you want Then hold me down and they yell and relax We 
all fresh Teach you 97's, I'm a rhyming legend Young and fire is weapon And slide a shell inside your melon The ring for the man, my home's a chillin' Load the piss, it's all cold to finish The loaf is poor, constricted The cold to lift up The S and H and the fortune four The shit's so pure Cash short in your plate I told her sniff some more The plug sister, we kick the door And rip the floor uh-huh. and Left out with break some more Celebrate with a fist from the liquor store And sip some more uh, I pop biscuits off Your top, I lift it off My way The world is yours Jealous of me. My whole life, everybody's been jealous of me. Everybody's been worried about me my whole life. They've done this to me. They've done this to me. You call me Weasel either, pal. No, I didn't. Oh, I you said paranoid. No, you called me Weasel, and I heard you. I want to sit down in that chair. I want to guide my men. I don't want to get in there. I don't want some guy seven foot four putting his dirty, filthy hands on me. I don't want some hillbilly putting his dirty, foreign hands on me. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Now, you think it's a handicap because there's two of you against three of us. It's a handicap in Europe. AMG 63 driver, love bottles, match the pedals, city street tires. Please try us, nigga, we fire. Keep firing, no cease fire. We fucking pull out a teeth with these pliers. You pussy, you can't even take a seat by it. My respect not only demanded, it's required. You fucking with a $2,000 sneak buyer. Such and such and them was winning, cause they'll just leave the ride. Out of the um, you know, 
the last day of time. So, bless up. Bless up, man. It's, it's a real sad time right now. Yeah, man, we definitely send our prayers and condolences out to the to the victims out there and the family. Yeah, man, Florida. You know, they just had the hurric- they just had the uh, the earthquake out there. We had the earth- we had the earthquake out again. Uh, matter of fact, a, it was, was in New Zealand. Thing. It was in New that Zealand and it was too. in uh, Japan. Was it was it Japan? I think it was, yeah. but it, it was a real it was a real big real big earthquake, you know, so we like we like to joke around in the show a lot, but we definitely wanna show our peace and love to everybody out there. You can only fathom what you guys are going through. Let me move. Yeah, man, that's all we can do, man. And it's doesn't help either way that media has been pretty much been crazy in regards to the coverage. Yeah. But what we're going to do now, we're going to take a call right here. Oh, we got a call? Let's go. Yeah, we're going to take a call right quick. Okay. First call of the night. you want. Dynamic duo with the guillotine, King Eric and Ella. What's going on? Y'all know this T-Max from VA. What up? Hey, what's, what's good, going man? on, brother? How you feeling? Lounging, lounging. Once again, I hear y'all waxing so poetically, you know, elegantly, you know, the sentiments of the world. You know, once again, our prayers to, you know, our islanders out of St. Thomas, you know, in Dominica, and also to the Far East, French, to Japan, you know, uh, there. That uh, earthquake that actually hit was, I believe, on the 6.5 Richter scale. It was about 125 miles, I believe, north yeah. of Fukushima. Damn. So, um, you know, obviously we're not going to know the full ramifications, but, you know. Did that, did that, did that earthquake make history on the Richter scale? No, no, no. Uh, no, well... 6.5 is serious, but usually when they get to the 9.5 range, that's when you're talking about real damage. Um, you know, but anything 6 and up is serious. When you get to the not the 9s, that's like, when it's to the 9s, that's, that's bad. You know, uh, that's like but you know. That's like the incredible punch in the ground type shit. Yeah, yeah, that's when you start seeing like seismic shifts, you know. But one thing about, oh, you know, boy. our Asian brother. One thing we start say about our Asian brothers and sisters over there, they, it's the it's the Japanese way that no matter what happens, that they keep going. And the same thing with our brown sisters and brothers in Mexico, they're gonna rebuild it. And the same thing with our island brothers and sisters in the islands, they're gonna rebuild. That's what was that, right? The, um, the earthquake it was a, it was in Mexico, right? The earthquake was over yeah, there also, Mexico, right? Yeah, it's in Mexico. Yeah, yes, it's in Mexico. Yeah, that's what I was trying to um, that's what I was trying to remember. Yeah, it was Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, so um, But yo, while we chopping <clears throat> it up here I think we have our, our guest of the night on there A man from he the did. legendary group Caution And he's doing his own thing right now My man Gonzo <laughs> yeah, Yo, 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 yo Yo, yo, what up with you? What's going on, brother? What's going on with y'all, man? Wow, wow. Yeah, trying to keep our head up. above water that's yeah, you know, that's it's been a it's been a real traumatic end of a summer, you know, with the whole hurricane hurricane season and earthquakes and you know certain people passed it. So it's been a right. real trying couple of um, three weeks. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, honestly, with 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 the weather and all that shit, that's that uh. That's that government control shit. That's that harp shit, man. Some shit called harp. So where, you know, these motherfuckers are able to manipulate the weather in certain, I heard, like, I heard in, about in certain that bursts. I heard about mm-hmm. that also. I heard about that too, but, you know, naturally well, around this time, it, it is hurricane season. So it's not like 
that's something out the ordinary. It's, you know, around this time, it's always like, you know, you get the tropical storms and stuff like that, like around, um, like the late, late August, you know, beginning of September. Man, I don't so, know, I know man. I'm just, just in the mood of, I'm blaming everything on Trump. I don't give a fuck. I, I check the code. <laughs> Trump <thing. laughs> Look, 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 Obama's sitting there like, ain't none of this stuff happened in eight years that I was in office. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. Actually, it has been happening. It's been happening since anybody was in office. You know, around that time. It's it's talking about, about, we're talking about how many oil, we're talking about who, who oil he's trying to jack this time around. Well, wait, hold on, guys, wait. There's a lot of noise in, in the background where you at. So can you, like, try to get away from that? Because you want to hear like, you what? Like, like, what y'all, what, what y'all, what y'all hear? What, is that better? It's not like, it's not like a TV or something. You're on a TV is, or is something. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah. That's much, that's much better. I bet. Yeah, now man. We welcome your boy to the show, man. We appreciate you joining, man. And first of all, man, we want to know, man, what's been going on with Gonzo? I know you got a new album out and everything. So, what what can people expect from that? Well, um, you know, from the first song to the last song, you know, what I mean, this shit is a. Uh, there ain't no album fillers on there, you know what I mean? Um, you know, like it's it's a solid project. And um, you know, people could people could actually go find it anywhere music is streamed and download it, you know what I mean, go check that out for yourself, you know what I mean? It's called the code. Um, you know, solid project. Every, you know, everybody that's downloaded it or streamed it or bootlegged it, they uh you know, they liked it, you feel me? And uh, I like you know, I like that name. I like that name, the code, like what would you explain? Like, basically, the album explains what the code is? Well, the album, it basically, um, the code, it was a cat named WAC 100, you know what I mean? I was working on some whole other shit. And, um, close the door, oh, we son. know about WAC. We know about WAC. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I was working on some whole other shit, and he, he started talking some reckless shit about Pac, so... I made a song that uh, I made a song called Face on the T-Shirt that was addressing that situation. And, you know, it done well. And, and people started asking for a project to go with it. So I just whipped up another, uh, you know, 13 songs that was around the subject, you know what I mean, and, and dropped it. Okay. Man, man, man. He just, he yeah. just named it the code. Well, I mean, it, 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 the code of of basically the outlaw niggas that I was fucking with, you know, what I mean, Edie and Noble. It is a code. I don't want to really get into it because it's a whole lot of shit that's explaining this that that cats, you know what I mean? That um, you know, I, I don't, I really don't want to just give away too much, but it, it it is a code that motherfuckers live by that was structured that that motherfucker actually. You know, took an oath to, and they broke that code by ignoring the disrespect from WAC 100, just because they were trying to uh, stay under the radar for being involved in the movie. Like it was a whole yeah. underlying sh- shit of why he was even doing all that. They was paying him with a budget of the movie to actually smut pop and just do all this old weird Hollywood gay fucking back room chew boy shit. Culture vulture shit to to fuck you know to, to to fuck this man's name up you know what I mean for a movie that no one's talking about months later nobody's talking about this movie and this this is like one of the iconic figures of of our generation let alone Black America so it was much deeper than rap I felt like that they broke the code so to reiterate mm-hmm. what the code was you know what I mean I kind of touched on a few things on that album. One more question. Uh, One more question I want to ask you. One more question I want to ask you. So, I know you talk about you talk about this on the album, like, because if we talk about this on the album, um, that's that's a real good thing, you know. That'll be a real good angle. Cause yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, because what you said, a lot of people don't really 
talk about that. A lot of people don't really talk about how they they besmirched the whole All Eyes on Me, uh, um, excuse me, All Eyes on Me um, movie. A lot of people, because, well, you know, a lot of people sit there and say, oh, it's whack. Especially a lot of rappers. They'll sit there and say, oh, it's whack. It was whack. But if those same rappers would have made a song about it staying out whack it was. So you probably you what? probably the only one that really build on that. Well, I mean, honestly, bro, I seen the movie, but I couldn't even watch that shit because it was just such a bad rep- representation of who he was, actually. So it was a disgusting fucking, you know, what I did, what I did stomach, it was just disgusting to watch it. And and, and it was, you know, it was one of those things where it was just put together for money. You know what I mean? It, and, and the people who who actually put the movie together, LT, he really didn't fuck with Pac. That wasn't like Pac's boy. He didn't, he probably hung around Pac five times in his life, maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe. Like, he didn't hang around Pac at all. Like, he, he stopped Pac outside the fucking, fucking studio and, you know, hop in the car with Pac and listen to beats there. But it wasn't like a situation where Pac and LT was ever riding around with each other, hanging out in the club with each other, over each other's house. None of that type shit. So to see LT end up with the rights to this movie was already a red flag because that's Snoop's boy. Like, LT is Snoop's nigga. So if you, you know, if anybody had any sense to to their brain, they would know, you know what I mean, with, with, with LT and Snoop's relationship, with LT always being a dude boy, to where, you know, you could speculate that, you know, who these private investors was. While you see Puffy, you know, having a private screening of All Eyes on Me with the Ciroc shit and all the shit and all the product placement in the movie and just hella shit that certain people shouldn't be making money off this man's name. It was just a violation. I don't give a fuck what was going on. in the movie? I mean, they had a Ciroc private screening. Now, I mean, this is a movie. This is a movie, though. So if you look hard enough... I'm pretty you already sure knew, gonna... And you already knew basically You already knew Pac Didn't fuck with Diddy on that level For him to even do that Like we all knew Us growing up listening to Pac Pac never rolled with Diddy So You know what I'm saying So that is some bullshit right there I mean here's the whole thing bro Like let's just Let's keep it one thousand while If 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 The Biggie movie Let's just say the Biggie movie If I don't know, the Tupac estate. See, it, the whole thing is this, bro. Biggie and Pac, that shit is like water under the bridge. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if it, if it was a fucking movie about Puffy Combs, stop doing that, son. I'm doing an interview. My bad, yo. Get out of here. Go. If it was a movie about Suge Knight, and Puffy fucking was the executive producer, or vice versa, a movie about Puffy, and Suge was the executive producer. You know what I mean? It's like, that's already foul play, you know what I mean? That's a conflict of interest. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it was a lot of things that that was surrounding this movie, and the budget of this movie, for them to get, uh, what was it, 33000 I mean, $33 million to shoot the movie, and they shot the movie with three million dollars and used thirty million for payroll, or something along those lines. Twenty-seven million for payroll. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> so it was like a a high-priced music video with Hype Williams or whoever, not Hype Williams, Benny Boom or whatever. Benny it Boom. was like a fucking yeah, it was like a music video. The shit was rushed. It was cheap looking, and it was a bad representation for one of the most iconic figures of our time, especially as black men, that was a critical time for us to up, to, 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 to level up. You know what I mean? So that, well, was, that, about, was, that was my gripe with it. What about the dude that actually played Pac? Like, uh, what was his name? Demetrius Strip? What was his name, Ken? Demetrius Strip Jr., yes. Demetrius Strip. Yeah. Well, yeah, what like, do you, th- like, how do you think, how do you think he... Yeah, how you think he um, portrayed Pop? You think he did a good job or not? 
I really think if all the actors done a, a, a good job, but they was, uh, you know, because they was giving some bullshit. They didn't know Pac. You feel me? So, with, with, with what they were giving, I feel like they done a good job. That was his first time actually acting. You know what I mean? That he's a black man. He needs a career in this business. This is what he want to do. So you can't shit on the kids that was in the movie. You can't shit on the motherfuckers that, you know, was just trying to put food on their table. But at the upper yeah. echelon of this shit are the people who know better, the people who know me and I know them personally. You know what I mean? That was a, some foul shit. You know what I mean? That was some real foul shit. The equivalent of one of your niggas dying. You know what I mean? And his little sister was six years old when he died. And you wait till the bitch till she eighteen and you start fucking her. Foul. Like, you know what I mean? Like foul shit. Like some shit is just foul, bro. You can't you can't really put a cap on some shit. You foul and you done it for the money. Now that the money's gone, where your integrity's fucked up. You can't come back to LA and just ride around and chill like that no more. Like niggas just you know what I mean, it's fucked up. Yeah. That's <clears throat> right. Um yeah, Gonzo, man. Thomas, a.k.a. T-Max from Virginia. How you doing? Man, I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm good. Good. Um, and if, um, you know, for, and if I could ask a couple questions as well. First off, I want to say everything you and Caution did throughout the 90s. I mean, that was some, just some of the essence of what made the 90s. You know, I think y'all really help to define that era for the West Coast in terms of the resurgence of a lot of groups coming out that were really putting on, you know, along the lines of exhibiting all of them. And I can right. hear the passion and the panache in your voice because you were around that time when Pac had come to the West Coast signing with Death Row Records. And even before then, you know, him being down with Digital Underground in the Bay, you know, so we're looking at two different parts of history from his history in West Coast rap, which rarely very many rappers can say that they had a career on both sides of it. Um, and for that part, how was it for that era of the of what? Because I think for a lot of us on the East Coast, I'm in Virginia. We really can only speculate, but you all actually have the essence of where Pac was. Tell us about that energy that he brought to, you know, Los Angeles during that 90s era? Well, I mean, that, that's a good question because the energy of the city did change. You know what I mean? The energy of the city changed from, um, I mean, how could I say this without being, well, I, I can't really say it without saying it the way it is. The, the energy changed from, being an NWA era mm-hmm. that was so embedded in, in in West Coast culture, you know what I mean? And it, it just and the lineage even grew when Snoop Dogg came out and the Chronic came out, and you know uh, Cube, you know he was basically you know doing his part, but Death Row was killing that shit. You know what I mean? We came out, we done our part, but Death Row was still killing it, even to the part run point of Suge managing us. So when Pac got out of jail, you know, that whole NWA or like aura over the city and West Coast that we all had, it was like a changing of the guards. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the whole energy changed to you know, even at well, you know, de- at death row. You know what I mean? It, it changed from the the Doctor Dre and the Snoop Dogg era. To the Tupac era, you know what I mean, and, and it was the ener- the energy changed um, drastically, even to the point to where you know some people didn't like it, some people loved it and rolled with it. I even think that that's the reason why Caution only came out with one album because at that time Ice Cube, you know, Pac was living. You know, Cube's, Cube's a very prideful person. You know what I mean? His his main group who's blowing up is basically hanging out with Death Row. Every move that Death Row's making, we're making because Suge's managing us. So slowly but surely, you know what I mean, it looked like Death Row was kind of taking us from Lynch Mob. You know what I mean? It was just a weird fucking time to where people 
you know, they knew each other before we knew them. So Cube, you know, kind of, I don't want to say despised the situation, but the energy definitely what, what was tense. And you can cut the air with a knife, you know what I mean? And and it was a changing of the guards from, you know, them being the kings of the city, the kings of the West Coast, to Pac being the king of the West Coast. And motherfuckers wasn't trying to just hand him over the crown, you know what I mean? They wasn't happy for him. Well, mm. yeah, and um, I think uh, because Zilla... Eric and myself, we have all talked about this um, and part, um impact on hip hop culture was undeniable. Hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. That that sound is that that background sound. No, 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 no. I have to, I have to go go out my kids' room right quick. Go out. Stop. The kids trying to soak that my game bad. up too. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, daddy, daddy, I just got full custody of my two-year-old, so my hey, kids hey, come on the road man. with me and shit. Congratulations. That, so we on That's the road right. and shit, and, and they in the we, other we, room going mainly. But go ahead, y'all. I'm sorry. We promote, yeah, we oh, no, promote fatherhood on Off the Cuff Radio. We promote fatherhood. You know what I'm saying? Look, man. On Off the Cuff Radio. Daddy love, too. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Daddy need love, too, baby. <laughs> look, look, you are the living Word. embodiment of what exhibit stood on uh on the foundation and your kids got a solid one with you. Um as I was uh as I was uh asking um, cuz we all cuz all three of us have talked about this and I think the biggest problem we had with the movie in addition to the fact that no everybody knows damn sure that there were no iPhones back in 1994. Um <laughs> Right. Was also was also the fact that's that, that, that that's that product placement I was talking about. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure if you look close enough, you'll find some fucking Ciroc or something in there that 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 Diddy is is benefiting off of. I'm I'm sure of it. I bet it. But, yo, King, but remember what I said though, King. At the end of the day, I yeah. don't care. This dude Pop, this dude Pop was a prophet. So what if right. he had an iPhone eight? You know what I'm saying? He was he was spitting rhymes. He was spitting rhymes that was ahead of his time. He was talking about, you know what I mean? He was talking about President Bush before he was in office. Well, you know he was saying? talking so, about Trump in an old interview, and look at him now. Like, man, you know the, what? I, I honestly say, and, and, and if I'm lying, y'all could go and look up the whole Chappelle show skit. When this dude Chappelle was at a club and they was listening to a new joint from Tupac, and when he said, "I just wrote this a week ago, a week ago," <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote this right now. I'm in the studio right now. <laughs> but really, but really, though, man, is it, see, it, see, a lot of people was kind of like surprised that you came out of the woodwork. Because, you know, honestly, I, I was looking at it, it was very disappointing that nobody was really responding to the stuff Wack was saying. I, I don't know if it was fear or I don't know if it was some type of connection involved. Man, I, but I, I called all them the guys first cat to step before up. I said anything. I called all them guys and was like, what the hell is going on? Because you notice I, I just put out a project before the code called Happy Birthday, maybe a month and a half Ooh, before the code. That? And um, Noble was on there. He's on the first song. So we was talking about this oh, shit oh, for like, yeah, for like two weeks before I said anything. But once he started talking about Afeni and the, and just all the unpleasant things he was saying about her, and again, I, this is someone that I know personally, that I respect, that I knew personally, and you know what I mean, just the bond that Pac had with his mother and how I, you know, my mother and just you know. Y'all, y'all have mothers. Some, somebody talking about some, you know, one of your your partner's mothers like that that's passed away, or somebody that you. That shit was just out of control. So you know, me being yeah, when he, an LA guy, about, when he was talking about you mean, when, when when he was coming at Tretch Mom when he said it. Um, he was coming crazy. Nah, at he Tretch was coming Mom. at Afeni. Nah, he, 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 yeah, he he was talking about Afeni, man. He was. I never heard that. 
Yeah, yeah, I know we talked about the, the nigga was saying no. some crazy, 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 Cause I, cause I crazy remember, stuff. I, Cause I remember when you know when Trench Trench was like the only one that everybody knew at the time was thick enough for pot, and then Wack was saw talking about his mom's all crazy. Oh, your mom sucked dick. Come come see me. I'm like, yo, what's up with this? Dude? Like, how old is this dude? Be like, come on, my dude. Like. You, like, come on, you man, see the you whole be a grown man at, at the end of the day. And you going well, mad that, hard on another dude's <clears throat> moms and all that just for what? Just to get some just to get some Twitter followers, just to get some YouTube likes. And it's really good nah, to Just to get on love and hip hop Los Angeles. Man, listen. This shit is way deeper than like motherfuckers be doing shit for the weirdest fucking gayest reasons, man. Look, check it's this ridiculous. out. This motherfucker, you know why he was doing all that shit and, and still doing all this shit today? You know that's the game's manager and Ray J's manager, right? Yeah, and, and a, yeah, yeah. A whole yeah, bunch of other yeah. motherfuckers. Well, I mean, these motherfuckers really be on their love and hip-hop tip. So he was trying to get his his old ass on the cast to love and hip-hop, causing a frenzy and just saying whatever. You know what I mean? So basically, Plus, basically, basically it was a work. Like I don't know, what you, like I don't know if you know if you're familiar with wrestling, but a work, yep. a work means like you don't really mean it. You just talking crazy just to get a reaction. Trolling. That's what trolling. That's yeah, trolling. Trolling. That's 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 like a work. Yeah, you can say that. Well, I mean, honestly, he didn't know Pac. Rap didn't know Pac. He wasn't around back then. Like you know what I mean? And by you some weird reason. He saw, he saw the guy fucking, he knew Pac. Nah, man, listen to me, bro. This dude, that's a work right there. He didn't know Pac. You know what I mean? For a fact, he didn't know Pac. And I, I'll tell you why he didn't know Pac. He met Suge after Pac died. I met Wack when he first got out of jail. I was doing mm-hmm. a fucking um, a Roger Troutman. Roger, Trout, Roger Troutman had just died or some shit. And we was doing like a Roger Troutman tribute album. And um That was in ninety nine, I'll give or take. S- somewhere around there. You feel me? Yeah. Pac had already yeah. died. You feel me? And this nigga was at the studio one day when I came over there to do my verse for this Roger Troutman tribute album. And um he had just got out of jail. He was at the studio called Wolfpack Studios. This nigga named Wolf on it. Wolf was actually the executive producer of the uh, Roger Troutman tribute album. And uh, he was like, yo, this is my little homie Wack. Or, no, Crash. I think the nigga named, yeah. Or some dumb shit like that. He just got out of jail. And I'm like, all right, nigga, what up? You feel me? And keep walking in the studio. Now, that instance, you feel me? He's running around town talking, telling niggas he know me. Even went on, you know, so far as calling my phone. And I'm like, nigga, what's up with you? What's up with all this pop shit? He's like, nigga, fuck all verbatim. This is what the nigga say. Fuck all the internet shit. You don't remember me? You don't remember that time? I, like a fucking grumpy, my nigga. So this nigga is really wow. a fucking a, 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 a bona fide Man. weirdo. You know what I mean? So you mean, um, you mean to tell me, so then it's, it's not a work then because he really thoroughly believes that he actually... Met you, or you know, a bad pot. So well, that was I did meet the nigga in passing, but as grown ass men, you know what I mean. First off, yeah. First off, let me tell you something, bro. We booked pot when I was in high school. Like we used to throw these parties in high school, and we booked this nigga <coughs> before. You feel me? Cost us eight thousand dollars in high school. I never God thought, like after I after I met the nigga pot like officially. You feel me? I, I never brought that shit up to hella long later like, that I met him before. That's some groupy shit. Like, uh, honestly, you know what I mean? Just that, that shit's not a good look. But it makes sense because the niggas he hang around with, the niggas that he managed, all these niggas is like, you know, it's it's a weird crowd of, of, of dudes who, who might do anything. You, they might pop a pill and get in bed with each other. Or, you know, like niggas you know, like whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, bro. Like you gotta look. Like listen, whoa, I'm telling you some real shit. Then. Like, 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 like motherfuckers that's that's you know fucking with the Def Jam card back in the that, day. For those that's listening, anybody, that's anybody, anybody that was radio. under Leo Leo Cohen and, and Puff Daddy, 
You feel me? The and you know, it, it's it's a certain element of I don't know any and Clyde Davis. You gotta understand. Let's look at all these motherfuckers who who got deals, and I even go back to Will Smith, bro. You feel me? Like all these motherfuckers yeah. who they getting deals from, who putting them on, are dudes who have some shit called the director's couch. So where these motherfuckers, you know, Clyde Davis, Puffy, Andre Harrell, all these motherfuckers are known homosexuals. Now I don't have nothing against gay people. Feel me? I, you know, I have. I, I, I'm not the one who's creating people, so I can't hate anyone on this earth. All I know is. It's a person that you respect. That's someone who's out in the open and who they are, and another person who's in the closet and manipulating society. I got two boys. I got sons. You feel me? They they, they rapping all this shit, but now they're going to sneak a dress in there, sneak a purse in there, sneak a blouse in Yo, there. Jo- this shit is getting too far now. Definitely. Um, this, is, this is the thing I wanted to build on with that, though. Like, because, like what you said, I'm not here to judge anybody. We're not here to judge anybody. You know, if I hate when motherfuckers sit there and say they're not gay and they're sitting there and they want to address. That's what confuses kids even more. Because they feel I'm like, saying. it's like, okay, um, I, I don't understand. Like, what's, you know, because if you gay, you gay. It is what it is. You, can, you know I me, mean? you're a gay rapper, you're a gay rapper, you know, like. Like with young dog or whatever the case may be, but don't sit here and you know say you smoking dicks and you know and you wearing dresses and and you gonna sit there and say oh I'm not gay oh I got a girlfriend so what you can have a girlfriend and be gay right you know what I'm saying I mean I'm just just saying is like for like as men in hip hop brother you feel me this was something that we was. That we created yeah, way was, back in the day to bring yeah, truth that was to a our no-no. show. It was a no-no. It was definitely and, a no-no. I mean, no-no whoever you then. are, be who you are. You know what I mean? But at this, at the, what I'm saying is, okay, for instance, Lil Yachty, this this guy, you know, he's selling albums to kids. All his fans, I'm okay. Oh, he, he All his fans much. is kids. So, so now, so you know, as, as, as an executive <laughs> over there, as an executive over there selling Lil Yachty's project, I would just put myself in Coach K's shoes. And Lil Yachty comes to me and he says, I want my album cover. I want two guys on there kissing. I want this. I want that. I want everything that's backwards about society on, on this album cover. That was my, ch- my my opportunity to be Superman for, for, for the younger generation to say, no, I'm not putting this out there. You feel me? But Bro, don't for the dollars. An album cover like that. Lil Yachty. I think somebody. That's Lil Yachty album called Right Like somebody's. Um, it's like a, um, two dudes making out in the movie theater or some shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all yeah. sort of shit on there. It's, it's all sort of stuff on there that's that's just and then they sit there and say, oh, I'm, and then when they sit there and say, oh, I'm not gay. So why don't you put that in your album cover? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I don't. I just don't understand because it's like if you're not gay, then why do gay things? Exactly, you know what I'm and, and it, 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 my problem with hip hop, bro. Even if you look at, if you go to Lil Uzi Vert's page right now, every picture that he takes, it's a gay expression that's attached to it. Like everything <laughs> is promoting homosexuality. No bullshit. Every he's not lying. In the he, he's like, not lying. He is not like, lying. Like every little thing that they do. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Even your toughest rappers, man. I even caught Meek Mills in a couple of pictures. I'm like, who's the fucking stylist who's telling he's, these he's dudes to tough. do this? He's not a tough dude, guy. Dude. Gonzo, he's I know you're tough. talking about that Gucci. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking yes. about that Gucci you know outfit he had on. Oh, bro, like what? Yeah, the, and the what? shoes too. I was like, hold on, wait, hold on. Stop it. Stop hold it. On, I think we, just said, hold on one second. Hold on one said, second. I think we have uh, Mr. Call Chill on. That's our other co-host. Okay. You know what it do? What it do? How y'all doing tonight? Y'all got me cracking up laughing. I promise. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. This hey, I've been missing here. Hey, you know I was missing y'all, but I was listening, but I was trying to multitask. But look, y'all talking about the toughest of the toughest. 
y'all gonna have to answer me one question because this ain't the first time I heard about this. Well, I, I got somebody that live in LA, one of my cousins, and they always talking about anybody in Atlanta from hip hop, most of them gay, and the people in LA that you would think wasn't is. But look, right. y'all talking about the toughest of the toughest. And I know, I know, I know, I know Gonzo got a lot to say, so I'm going to just ask him straight out. Is my niggas at D-Unit? Please don't tell me none of them hard-ass niggas gay, because, nigga, I'm going to die. I'm going to cry right now. Who? G-Unit. G-Unit. G-Unit? Yes. Well, this is I mean, G-Unit? you know what? You know what? Uh, Honestly, th- this is like, this, th- that, that's like some shit that I really don't have, I don't have information on, because... Hey, I ain't that's gay, all I need you feel me? That's I'm not gay. I don't know about and, and that. So, so, that's so going, whatever that's circles going, that they that's running around in, in, in L.A., I really don't know about because Young Buck is from, from Memphis. But I did hear some shit about that, you know what I mean? But people could be just throwing some smut. The other, If I'm speaking on, uh, on somebody, I know for you a know fact, you feel me? Like, yeah. I, I, I know for a fact. Asking. That's why I asked you, because there's a bunch of rumors back in the day, but as far as knowing people that know people, I ain't heard nothing to do to prove it. So I'm just saying, you know, that's my group right there. I love them and all of that. They all, I don't give a damn what nobody say. They still hitting records, and I love them. I just, you know, I got to ask because you, yeah, you, you got to get those clarifications. We were beefing with them, too. We was beefing with them for a minute, too. I, I, I heard you. You want to have some information? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, oh, y'all. 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 First, first and foremost, first and foremost, let's, you know, yo, Trichella, we all are just glad that you're safe, you know, because, you know, you went through the hurricane and all that shit, you know, and yeah. we glad that you're still here chopping it up with us. And actually, it's been over a year since he's been, since he's been down with the dinner team, y'all. So, you know, we hey. appreciate you. Yeah, I'm yeah. Oh shit! Oh shit! A one year anniversary. Yes. Yeah, I should have came over. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what's up. I ain't really. Hey, Carlo, I'm having fun, man, and I've been having fun on this show, so it just flew by me. I didn't even realize. Yo, since we gave shout up. outs, I want to give a shout out to everybody in the Northwest. You know what I mean? Everybody in Seattle. Everybody in, in Idaho. Everybody in, in, in Oregon, I'm in the area right now, you know what I mean? Um, you know, we up here working right now. Tech 9 about to pull up and do a show up in Seattle. And uh, I don't know, okay. maybe a week, y'all, y'all know better than I do, but I'm in the area right now doing verses. I got beats for y'all. Um, you know, I'm working, man, you know what I mean? Promoting, I'm doing radio right now, pulling up, doing DJ drops. Whatever the situation is, y'all know how to contact me, 213-973-2416. Holler at your boy. All right. Yeah, we're going to need that uh, drop. We're going we're gonna need that, we're gonna need that off-the-cuff radio drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. That's the break. That's what it's doing. Hey, before, yeah. we the tip, before we get off the hurricane tip, I got to send a shout-out to all the people in the Keys. I know they went through yeah. it more than Houston you know what I'm saying? Houston, Houston, Houston went through it. Corpus Christi, they went through it. All the yeah. Everybody that was able to survive it, shout out to y'all. Everybody who lost somebody in the three three that were lost, and my condolences go out to you because this shit was unprecedented. And I don't know what the fuck the, the world went through right now, but I definitely got to give a shout out to all the survivors and everybody that lost loved ones and all, all the souls that were lost. True, true. And, and, and you know what? Another thing too. Shouts go out to the entertainers that contributed money to when it comes to the relief, when it comes to the hurricanes and stuff. Shout you out know, to Trade the Truth, Trade the Truth, yeah. especially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, Trade the Truth had to get rescued himself. Trade the Truth had to get rescued himself. So once he got rescued, and, and he even said it. He was, it was a humbling experience for him. So, shit, he was out there. He did what he could. He got people that I think he didn't even know. They just hit him up on the gram or something. And he got he got them out there with their boats, and they started doing it. They had a bunch of celebrities, a bunch of public figures that got out there. Some people signed like they said they got out there and didn't. Talk talking about he was going to donate a million dollars, but since it wasn't going to be a tax write-off, he didn't. So, fuck them niggas. But the ones that helped, even, even, um, 
JJ Watt, he put together a fund. He got everybody contributing. Then people could hit JJ Watt on, on the gram or wherever. You know what I'm saying? And he reach back out to him and he go help him. And what no, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get money and And then even um, your boy Mattress Matt. Mattress Matt got people his real cell phone number and hit him if you're in distress. People like that, you got to give respect to. I don't give a damn who you brought it for. If you don't like hip hop, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Time, a few people, a few people up, done put up bread. bread. A few people, uh, though, yeah. I think Mayweather, Mayweather put up bread. I think Mayweather put up bread. Who else put up bread? Um, and they time, Because time is time. I think DJ Khaled put up bread. I think DJ Khaled put up bread. A few people don't put up bread of entertainers. You know, like, so that's, you know, a lot of people, look. like, put, it's, it's, yeah, especially when it comes to radio outlets. They never want. They never want to talk about when certain entertainers put money into good stuff. They always want to talk about oh, oh, um, this artist just bought this somebody got and, a red. You know, they just yeah. Yeah, so, yeah we, I mean, mean you know what? what? Long, Hold on, wait. How long stop it. Stop it. Is it. Somebody on the TV is, is killing me right now. Somebody got somebody listening to heavy metal or something or Rugrats right now <laughs> on a TV. <laughs> Word. Now, now it's gone. Now it's gone. We we we, we good now. We good. Wait, 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 we we gonna say on, Cause you was gonna chime in. I, I was I was saying that Bun B done his thing too. Yeah, Bun, Bun B, B done his thing yeah. too. Yep, See, you know, Port Arthur went through it, too. Port Arthur and Beaumont caught it after Houston did, so shit. They was going through it, too. Shouts out to all them cities. It ain't it's too many cities to even name. That's the problem. As a matter of fact, did it, did, Gonzo, did it, um, Bud B, he, like, put, like, a whole team together, didn't he? I think it was, like, a collective effort, and they all put their money in. It wasn't only Bud B. It was Bud B and a few other people. Like a coalition. Hold on a second. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, but I think that's what Bumby did. Bumby basically he he got a few people together, and he's like like a coalition, and they all put together like a um I think it was like a fundraiser or something like that, and all the proceeds went to uh, you know the hurricane victims, you know right. stuff like that. You know, because you know a lot of people always talking about oh. All these rappers out here want to be buying all this flashy stuff, but they never want to give back to the community. So, you know, sometimes they do. But you know what? And well, a lot of them do it without being public about it, and that's the coolest part about it. When you're doing it and it's not for show, when you do it under uh, underground and, and behind the scenes, to me, that's more admirable. A lot of people don't know what they're talking about because they don't see what people are really doing. But not everybody right. is doing it for a publicity stunt or for, for promotional reasons. People exactly. sometimes well, people really don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know. you know what? It's just it's just like a natural ritual, speaking of that, you know what I mean, in terms of, um, you know, when, when you grow up in those situations, it's kind of natural. You know, and everybody grows up in their situation. They don't always give back. So let me not say that. But myself, personally speaking, from experience of of you know being raised for at least two years in a battered woman's shelter with my mom, the equivalent of being homeless. You know what I mean? So every time the kids grow out of something, or you know, I get an extra few dollars in my pocket, or buying a few outfits for the kids, I always got to take it and drop it off to a specific shelter that I grew up in that's still open in Los Angeles. You know what I mean? That I, I got tough. a personal connection to. So, you know, my phone, and, and no one was ever, I, I don't ever go in there with my phone and try to film it. And Because and, these, mo- these people that live in there, they people too. You feel me? They, they got Instagram. They got the internet too. So they don't want you to come in there and blowing up their spot, letting people see where they, you know, where they got to live at, and you know, what I mean, it's just a weird situation. I know how I felt when people tried yeah. to come in there and with, with news cameras or whatever the situation was. Like I didn't want my friends at school know that I lived in a, a battered woman's yeah, shelter. It's embarrassing, you know. It's a little embarrassing. Yeah, exactly, and everything ain't for show, man. So I feel her on that. 
Real talk. For sure. And then, you know, they still got places underwater in Houston, and they still got a bunch of people living in shelters in Houston. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people went Facebook Live and, and, and was reporting that situation. But I know a lot of people that don't want any cameras in their face. They don't want anybody coming to them talking about nothing. Mm-hmm. All they want is who's in their house. If you ain't got some insurance money, some resources to put them back in their house, they don't want to hear nothing what niggas got to say. They ain't trying to get that 15 minutes of fame like that. All they want to do is right. get back to living normal. And so, shit, right. I feel you. I'm, I'm sorry that you yeah. had to go through all of that. I'm glad you made it out and made it the person you are in spite of all of that. That's that's what I'm glad about. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't really, I don't really even consider it as it was. It was a step up because we was in the streets before that. You know what I mean? Daddy had been gone for for five or six years, so he wasn't beating on my mom. You know what I mean? It was the remnants of just having some of the past and, and having somewhere to go without having to. Uh, her having to pay for a, a damn motel every day, so you know That's it's real. all a process. Right. Yeah, how do you get your like? How did you get your your finding within music? Like you know, as your as your outlet. Um, you said in the beginning or just now? In the beginning. Well, in the beginning, like I said, I was I was uh you know mom's. Was uh, we was having a rough time, and she had ended up going. She she had got a a job working for the school board, a part time job working for the school board. So that part time job turned into full time, and we got a little one bedroom apartment. And um, you know she was saving money and shit, and she decided to go out one weekend. So. When she went out this weekend, she met she met this dude that was in the, in the Navy. <clears throat> so once she met him, um, he started coming over to the house and stuff. <clears throat> and one weekend, he was over to the house. Um, my friend came through and was like, man, you want to come to the studio with us? And I'm like, the studio? You know, I, I didn't know shit about that. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's $60 an hour. So I'm like, the fuck cost sixty dollars an hour? So I'm thinking, okay, well that killed it for me. I know I I'm not going. I, I don't got sixty bucks. Mom's ain't forking over sixty bucks. So like I said, the dude was over there and he was like, Yeah, I give it I'll give you sixty dollars. So he gave me the sixty dollars, you know what I mean, in front of my mom and shit, trying to gain some points I guess or whatever. And I went to the studio. <laughs> And uh, that one song that I that I laid that day, Ice Cube ended up hearing that one song, and uh, wanted to sign whoever was on that song to a record deal, and that's who Caution wow. was. That's how we got our deal. That's what wow. it is. Um, now, when you did now when y'all did bounce Ross Skate, when y'all did that, did you have any idea in Eric? You know. Already, you know, asked about the pro- you know how you got in the studio. Uh, take us and the listeners through the process of everything, like actually putting the album together and even shooting the video for what you're gonna do. Please. Right, right. Crazy. Well, I mean, okay, so bam, we we done the song, and then you know, no one was expecting anything. We were still in high school, you know. What I mean, we just was making a song. I don't even know why the fuck we was making a song. I was playing football. Doing, you know, I didn't hear nothing about this song for six months. <clears throat> One day, I mean, because the dudes in Caution, we went to the same school, but we never hung out together. and We wasn't friends, you know what I mean? We was just associates in passion. And I used to sell him weed. So that's how that happened. He came to my house to buy some weed that day and asked me that I want to come to the studio. But anyway, so we done this song. And um, six months later, he called me, and um, he, you know, he was on his way to my house to pick up some trees, and he was, you know, the three-way wasn't wasn't invented. Well, it was invented. He said, "Hold on, my line just clicked." Boop. So he clicked over, and he said, "Yo, you never believe who the fuck's on on my other line." And I'm like, "Who?" He like Ice Cube. I'm like, "Man, get the fuck out of here!" Like he never told us that that. He had went and gave Ice Cube the tape because he lived by the college USC, and Cube was like 
recording a movie called Higher Learning at the time with Buster Rhymes and whatever. Love that movie. At, at, exactly. At USC. Oh. So he had like he had like ran up to the nigga and, and gave him our tape. And Cube called six months later. So when he, when he called, I happened to be on the phone with Sale from Caution, the, the fat kid from Caution, and um, he called Cube on the three-way. And from that moment, you know what I mean, we just immediately got in the studio. He gave us, like, $25,000 a piece. And, yeah. Um, yeah. He gave Yo, us, like, man, $25,000 a piece. Wait, 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 Y'all wasn't even signed yet, and he gave y'all 25 racks a piece? Nah, we wasn't signed yet. Caution had already had a demo deal through Capitol Records, though. Shout out to my boy Malik Levy over there. You know, Caution was already hot already through the city. You feel me? Like, niggas was, they was already hot. Caution was a group of five dudes without me. They was already a group. You feel me? Who was the five They was all, Sale, Cato. Uh, this dude named Ski, this other dude named Crow, and this dude named D. <clears throat> so they was already a group. Feel me? When I came to the studio that day, the other dudes in the group had already left. So it was only two dudes still there, Sale and Kato. So when I got on the song with him, it was only three of us on the song. So when he gave Cube the demo tape, he gave him the demo tape that that uh, Capitol Records had paid for, which was five songs, and he put the song that I was on, uh, which was with that South Central, like with that uh, with the Cypress Hill sample on it. He put that as the last song on the tape. <clears throat> so when Cube got the shit, he was like, "Whoever's on that last song, that's who I want the group to be." So the other dudes, they just got X'd out, and it was my first time in the studio. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's like a, that's like somewhat of a like a somewhat of a Cinderella story. Huh. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Mhm. Yep, that's how that happened. So after he he, he made us a group <clears throat> and he happened to be like that weekend that he made us a group, he was shooting a little ass G video. And that's how I got in that video. He was like, come on, come meet me at this address on Saturday at 9 o'clock. So we get there. We don't know what's going on. It's like hella people and hella white people with walkie-talkies and cameras and shit. We're like, what the fuck's going on? You know what I mean? So it's the man in black. Right. <laughs> so, you know. Then, okay, so we shot that video, Little Ass G. So now we get, you know, he takes us in the studio, and he's like, okay, who who, who done that beat? He, we said, we done the beat. He was like, y'all produce? We said, yeah, we do beats. So he gave us another $25,000 in the check form and wrote it to this music, uh, this music fucking store in West L.A. called West L.A. Sound. We went in there and bought $25,000 worth of equipment and put the shit in the back of his studio at Street Knowledge Studio. We had our own room at Street Knowledge. And that's basically where we done the album. Q, he didn't do the album with us. We done that whole album ourselves, and he done two songs with us, which was the two singles. Now, but now that you say that, that cause this, this, this is interesting. This sounds real interesting. So since he basically paid for the equipment, like, did he right. treat y'all like the the OVO camp? Like, basically, he just held y'all hostage and had y'all just making beat after beat after beat. Like, basically, like, y'all not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I'm going to keep y'all held hostage, and he's just going to keep on doing music. And Or did y'all have, you know, like, a, um, a flexible time frame right. when it comes to y'all working? Well, I mean, Cube's an arrogant motherfucker. You feel me? So... He wasn't he, he wasn't trying to get no beats off of us, you know what I mean? He was just, like, pissed off that we didn't want him to produce our album because at that time he had just, like, started producing 
on a professional level and at you know, again, trying to keep up with Dre. He was mad because we didn't want him to produce our album. You know what I mean? Mm. So you know, that kinda he wasn't showing you know, he 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 didn't like that shit, you feel me? So we we turned in our album and shit was banging. Well, hold on, wait, you should have answered the question, though, because, like that? I said, yeah, because well, I, was, <laughs> I was asking, did he keep y'all, did, did, did he hold, hold y'all hostage? Because he gave y'all 25 racks for studio equipment. They, they yeah, he just took half the equipment. publishing. You know what I mean? He, 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 he handled it in a business way. He didn't gripe and pout about it. He just took half the publishing. So whatever we made, he owned it any half of it anyway, whether he made it no, or not. No, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Mm. no, no. I, you got, you got no, what are you about? Hey, what he's he talking about ghost riding. No, no, I'm talking oh, about well, basically yeah, like nah, nah, Yeah, man. yeah, that's true. That's true. Like basically he paid he paid for the whole studio, basically. Like from um from what you said in the story. He knows he basically he just charged us what he did was I understand what you're saying. Let me answer this. let me answer though. He basically gave us a hundred thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Twenty five thousand a piece, which that was seventy five, another twenty five for the studio, plus took half of our publishing. So every song that you heard on the album, whether he produced it or not, he got he owns half of it. So and y'all man, worked, you know what I mean? Y'all your own time frame. Y'all was able to um do songs or go to the studio anytime y'all wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I'm yeah, trying yeah, to do. Yeah, the studio. We, like, we had our own key to the studio. To, like, if he was cracking the whip, like, was he cracking the whip? Like, yo, I pay for this shit. Your motherfuckers better get to work. Nah, 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 because you know what? <laughs> you know why he didn't have to do that? You know why he didn't have to do that? Because we were so eager. We was young. We were so eager to, you know, it was a different time. You know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah. wasn't was as many rappers as it is right now. Like, we was special. You know what I mean? Niggas today get a deal off trash just by having a million of their friends reposted or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you actually had to have talent and get seeked out by, you know, the upper echelon, which is not as, you know, it's not customary today for a cat to, you know, get introduced into the, you know, fraternity by the elders. They could just sneak in, and that's what's causing all the riff of motherfuckers thinking that, you know, Playboy Cardi. Like, I can't tell you one lyric that he's saying in this song, but he got the biggest <laughs> song in, 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 on the chart right now. Like, who is this guy, and why is it now to where we was, you know, selling the dope and popular for talking about selling the dope, they popular for being the fiends and taking the dope. Okay, like, so all the rappers now is the industry plant deal. Exactly. That's, that's, all, that's like the whole industry. They're talking about Well, I mean, my little cousin, rest his soul, he just died <clears throat> the night of the fight, the Mayweather and Taki, I mean, uh, McGregor fight. He took oh, some pills, 21 yeah. years old, and passed away, you know what I mean? And, but yeah. this, this is the time that we're living in right now. <clears throat> um, um, why I can't, you know, they try to pay me every day to, to go back to being, to go back to being a sheep and Stop speaking truth, and here's some money to get high and go buy a Ferrari and some chains. And like, man, I got money already. I'm chilling. You feel me? I ain't it's worried about. It's not only that. It's not only that. You got a family. You say you got. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm you right, you bro. But you need money to take care of your family, and, and a motherfucker offer you a million dollars, knowing it ain't gonna fall out the sky, and you gotta work for it. <clears throat> it's tempting. It's, it's easy to say when, when, when you know it's what I mean. Something, but, but it's it, one thing to compromise your integrity. You know what I'm true, saying? You don't want to compromise. You don't want to compromise your integrity, and you know your your kids your kids see it because your kids are gonna see it. Sorry. They're eventually true. gonna you're, get you're older. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely and they're right. And they're gonna be like, yo, yo, time. dad, what is you doing? You know, like, yeah, listen, you, what I'm, I'm, I'm just what being honest with you, bro. I'm being honest with you. If you if you if you if you know right now I'm in fucking Kennewick, Washington. You don't even know where that's at. I don't know where it's at. You feel me? But I'm here on some rap <laughs> shit with the kids. You feel me? For for about thirty five hundred dollars, and then I gotta drive tomorrow another six hours for thirty five hundred, and another eight. You know, with the kids. So what I'm saying is, 
at, at, at a moment of, of a motherfucker telling you, like right before Suge went to jail, I'm meeting with this nigga. He's about to give me 200000 to do an album, and I'm gonna, I was going to do the album. I was gonna. He wanted to film it all. I needed the money. You feel me? I was going to do the shit because I needed it at the time. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a compromise of my integrity then. But no, now, I'll, I after would everything, I won't think that. Now that everything like, right, has fired, that would have been the worst move of my life. So what I'm saying is, you feel you me? You, it, you don't think you don't think should grown up after all the crazy shit he's done been through. You don't think should has grown up by now and noticed. The error in his way? No. I know this wow. nigga. No, he's not. No, he's not. Some people, no. No. So, some people are just who they are. You got, they're not going to change. It's not, he's not in there reading books. He's not in there, uh, you know, doing shalots. He's not in there, you know, confessing his love to Islam. He's in there threatening motherfuckers. He's in there. <laughs> being who he is and who he knows how to be, you feel me, and trying to use that size and that weight instead of his brain to, to you know, that yeah. phone wasn't built to last. You feel me? That wasn't gonna last. Nothing. <laughs> nobody's not gonna be. No, no, no one's that fearful of the boogeyman. Once he appears too many times, you feel me? You are gonna start swinging at his ass. Feel and me? you know so, what's the thing too? You know what's the thing about Death Row? Like, Snoop didn't even have to go that crazy because Death Row. Had legitimate artists. These dudes were making good music. All y'all were making good music. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't. It was, like I understand a oh, you know muscle is needed when it comes to you know you got sometimes you got to be a little edgy to you know be heard. But for what he was how he was doing it, it wasn't needed because it wasn't like he had a roster full of bums. You know what I'm saying? You had you had Pac, you had Dre. You like it even got to the point where you put hammer in a G string, like you know what I'm mean? saying? Like <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah, losing our records what, though. You know, what, what the what the whole thing about that is, man? Some people are just sick, and power and power drives them. You feel me? And just knowing him, you know what I mean? And, and knowing other people who has that same bug, we all know him. To where you ask yourself, like, why did you just do that? Like, why? You feel me? Like, motherfuckers would just walk around and kick a cat or pinch a baby or some shit. Like, you just, you stink. And ain't nothing you can do to change it, you know what I mean? But it's it's crazy when that type of person becomes the person that's in power. Man, we said pinch a baby. Now, I don't know. Like, I, I can't pick the show just pinching somebody's baby and just walking away like everything is all good. Man, I don't know. this dude should make should, it like a hundred million dollars a year. To, they were, it was going gold. Well, everybody's making a hundred million dollars. He's a good person like, when it comes to paying this bill. Smack a nigga. Well, well, um, well, you said, 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 well, I think, but I think, um, and definitely Gonzo, because you were around during that time, and I think, um, as we are all hip hop historians, and you actually being an active participant during that time, I think a lot of people really feel that what happened at the '95 Source Awards was really a very ugly turn for what we saw for a few years of the East Coast West Coast beef. Whereas you said earlier. It didn't even have to go that route. When you first met Suge back in that '90s era, did you even have an? Uh, did you? Did you? You already. He already had had a, a reputation from his gang affiliations, and that's well documented. But did you see the situation morphing into ultimately what it did, and then even what happened two years ago on the movie set? Because apparently he came on the movie set on that same shit, trying to intimidate Dre and Q. But did you see that with Suge, where it was it? It was going to get progressively worse. When did you know well, that it was going to get progressively worse? Well, I knew that it was. I, I knew that it wasn't about us and our talent. You know what I mean? Okay. When when, when, when Suge, we was a, a money maker at the time, but we was also a pawn in in the game of him, just trying to get NWA back together under his control and ultimately trying to get Suge, I mean, excuse me, Cube on Natural Born Killers. 
<clears throat> Ladies it's and gone. gentlemen, this is a story oh, you wow. have not heard from the movie. This is a story you have Whoa. not heard from the movie. Whoa, like, should I say that alone? Control, yo. Ooh, yeah, please continue, continue. So, so, um, you know, he, he, the, when I knew that it wasn't about us, when he was like, yeah, I'm going to give y'all, um, he, it was 160000 We got 20000 apiece. And Daz and Corrupt got 50000 apiece to do Man. that song on the, on the Jackie Chan soundtrack, the Super Cop soundtrack. Right, right. So, I'm, I'm having a dinner with my kids. I'm happy in the car, so excuse the noise, but we just gave them yeah, something. Yeah, take your time. Yo. Take your so, time with so, this story. So, basically, um, Cube, I mean, Sug was like, yo, I'm going to give y'all one hundred and six. I'm going to give y'all $20,000 a piece to manage y'all. And we like, how the, you know, that's illegal, ain't it? Like, how you going to do that? So he was like, nah, I'm about to put y'all on the soundtrack, but if I make this move for y'all, I want to manage y'all. I want y'all to fire y'all old manager and hire on my wife, Sharita Knight. Oh, Lord. So this is our, this also like, how we met Pac, like too. That sounds like yeah. him. And yeah. we did yeah, it. That, we that. done the song, which the song ended up being I'll Do It, the song with Caution and the Dog Pound. And, um, you know, when he done it, he was like, now call this nigga Cube so I can pull his drawers up his ass. Because now, mm. now, I mean, <laughs> verbatim, <laughs> verbatim, verbatim, this is what this nigga said, man, and, and passed the fucking flip cell phone to a nigga like, so <laughs> he's like, call this nigga. I mean, you know, like, y'all sign now. That's the record label. He got to talk to me now because, you know, Q wouldn't talk to the nigga. So then after that, you know, it was like uh, he got him on Natural Born Killers because that opened the conversation. And, um, you know, but it also caused a rift between us and Q. You know what I mean? Ultimately, that's why we didn't come out with a second album because, you know, I never told niggas this, but Cube was kind of like on some I told you so shit after Pop got killed. Because he, he used to always complain about us hanging out with Pop. Now, in terms you of the... I mean? now, 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 in terms oh, of the... Well, hold, on, so, hold, on, hold on, Thomas. Let him finish. Let him finish. Oh, okay, ahead, okay. Please, 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 please. <laughs> so, so, you know, Cube used to always, like, complain about... I told you, they didn't... They wasn't happy that they was handing over the crown. You feel me? So... Cube used to always be like, why the fuck are y'all hanging out with this dude? Like, you know what I mean? It's, he ain't all that, basically. You feel me? And, you know, it was just tension there. So once Pop got killed, it was like, you know, I told you so. And, you know, Cube really never wanted to fuck with us again after that. Just on some personal shit. It had nothing to do with how high our album started. It had nothing to do with we sold more records than anybody he'd ever fucked with. It had nothing to do with, you feel me, like we're on Billboard and, 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 you know, he's mad at us and taking us off tour because some shit that had nothing to do with us. Like, we was kids, you know what I mean? We, we Why wouldn't we want to hang out with Pop and Death Row? And we didn't know the N.W.A. stories. We didn't know the history of, of Suge Knight and... and and Ice Cube or Suge Knight and Dr. Dre, like, we didn't know none of that. So while we're thinking this about us and the music, these niggas is having millions and able to, you know, move shit around accordingly and, and use us as pawns, you know what I mean? Mm. Definitely. Um, now, from that mm. era in 1994, with, now with that, and um, you're right, y'all had absolutely nothing to do with that situation. I'm, you know, you know, we're sorry that had to happen to y'all. Um, now, given the situation that Cube had with Suge, is this also a reason why the Helter Skelter album with him and Dre never came to fruition because of Cube's uh, issue you go. with Suge? This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Like, Cube is a very stubborn nigga, and he's not no bitch. You feel me? Like, that nigga, you know, he, he, he stood up to the nigga and, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not doing it. You know, he done mm. it. He's also a small businessman. That's that's one thing that kept Ice Cube afloat. Very yes, small businessman. Yes. While everyone else was intimidated by shit, you feel me, Cube, he has the right people around him in L.A. to where he, you know, Suge was never a threat to him. And the only reason why he done that uh, natural born killer shit 
is because Easy had just passed and it was just some sentiment there and Dre asked them to do it and they were really friends, you know what I mean? So that's, that's love though. That's love though. That's how that happened. Mm. It wasn't because of no intimidation by shit. You know, well, you know he didn't I just think ultimately, like, Silk didn't have to, you know, really flex his muscle that crazy. Like, going back to the roster, you even had Casey and JoJo coming through and and um, singing hooks at, 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 at his, um, you know, at his beck and call. They wasn't even down with that, bro. Just for the, right. you know, just for the hell of it, they'll come through and do hooks. You know, Danny Boy was okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all could have lasted longer than this should. It's just that this dude, like, Chuck basically was just wilding the fuck out. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, the insecurity got... thing, bro. He should just, yeah, even... you know, that was an insecurity thing, an insecurity complex. When you're trying to control people and humiliate people and put them in situations to where you're empowering yourself, that was just him and, uh, you know, and the lack of not being a real executive and having a roster like that the bigger it got. And, you know what I mean? It's like he wasn't the man for that job. He wasn't the man for that job at all, you know what I mean, in terms of being an innovator and the Quincy Jones-type level when you have your whole roster that's on Billboard and, you know, you're not a smart guy. You're just a guy that fell into a situation threatening somebody and it turned, you know what I mean, it's, it comes to a head to where now you, you know, you, you would rather humiliate your heroes to make yourself feel better, I guess. Well, it's funny you yeah, said that because... Did anybody ever patch that situation up? Because I know y'all two was going at it for a while. Who's that? You and Danny Boy. Um, I mean, Danny Boy, he's a... Uh, oh, wait, hold on, wait. He, I, wait, I, I stop, wouldn't, stop, I wouldn't, stop, wait. I wouldn't. Wait, wait, I didn't know you, you, wait, hold on, you had, you had a little disagreement with Danny Boy? I didn't, These niggas went at it. I just didn't like what he was saying <laughs> wait, about hold on. Go, go to the beginning, you know, you gotta, you gotta paint this picture for us now, like, how did gotcha. that start? Well, Danny Boy was, was, um, on, first Danny Boy was all about the movie, then once... He didn't really get his million dollars he thought he was going to get out of the movie. And LT and them, you know, people start playing with checks over there. He's, he started dollars? complaining. Excuse me? Well, no, wait, I mean, I'm, I'm just being I'm funny. I didn't really say that. I didn't, on every I figured that, out loud, like, how did he boy I was just being he funny. Not a million. He just thinks so that. He was just being funny. He, he, oh, he okay, just okay, thinks okay. he's going to okay. get rich at, off every deal. So once things didn't go right on that deal, he started complaining and, you know, talking about Pac and Pac's mother on his uh, Instagram live. You know what I mean? And, and again, man, Afeni, this was his mother. Like, she was not, not any of our peers. This is somebody's mother. So for somebody to even be calling her by her name without saying Miss Afeni or whatever the situation may be where someone's speaking on her, as their peer, or, 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 you know, saying Pac was this or Pac was a clown. You know, this is what he said out of his mouth, Pac was a clown. So once he said Pac was a clown, you know what I mean? I'm like, bro, you can't blame Pac because you signed the deal with Suge, you know what I mean, to where he owned your publishing. You was the dude who was sleeping in the bed with him. You was the dude who was, oh. you know. Like, like, you know. Literally or figuratively? And, no, literally. <laughs> literally. 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 Hey, don't tell me radio, ladies and gentlemen. Only uh, here. This is what I'm trying to tell you about, about, about <laughs> power, man. Like, these dudes was making, he was making guys do stuff that was unmentionable. Because all because you know all I mean? jokes aside, I did hear that Danny Boy actually did come out of the closet. All, jo- all jokes aside, I could be wrong, but yeah, he I did. did. I, no, yeah, he, did. Wrong. He, came out the he came out the closet on my timeline too. Like, okay, so I am gay. Like that was a a big bombshell on my internet timeline because I've <laughs> sat next to Danny Boy on planes. I've you know, I got kicked off the, when, when we got kicked off the plane with Pac. 
me and Danny Boy was the one that got us kicked off the plane. Yeah. For bringing alcohol on the plane. So I didn't even know he was gay. You feel me? Like, I kicked it with him. Like, it's not just somebody that I, you know what I mean? Like, he's been around. But I didn't know he was gay then. I knew that he, you know, used to sleep in the in the house with Suge. And later on, I heard that sleep in the bed with him. I mean, just, dude, just weird shit. Right, right. Real right. shit. That's crazy. You feel know I me? Mean? You sleep in the bed ass. with another grown ass man. Especially Shug. Shug is a big, yeah. sweaty, hairy dude. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm back to this dude. Oh, oh, man. What? Yo, wow. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm a Let me tell you all. Y'all think it's killing me. Keep going, though. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's you, you can't you can't think that someone who would want to see another man in the G string don't got a homosexual bone in his body. Like just because he's three hundred pounds, I've seen some pretty questionable shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> all right, now, <laughs> just don't say just don't say MC Hammer sucks your nice cock. I'm not trying to hit anybody oh, like that. No. Like, that, oh. that, yeah, that's hard, that'll be heartbreaking. You know what I'm saying? What did Jeff say? I'll cry for weeks. Look, what did Jeff say? I'm not touching that with a 40 foot pole. Like, yo. Well, I mean, I just call it how I see it, man. He was wearing a G string. I'm just calling it how I see it. I've been at a lot of parties. Y'all never did that shit because the first time, the first time I seen that video, you know what I mean? I was a kid. And I'm bugging. I'm like, you know, I'm confused. I'm like, yo, why? I don't want to see this. Like, what is what's going on here? Why is this so y'all y'all want to hear something crazy? Y'all want to hear something ah, crazy? Now, ah, it's, 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 you know, Los Angeles is big, but it's not that big. You know what I mean? Right, right. It was this one time that it was a stripper. Her name was Alice A. And she was in a whole lot of songs. People talked about her a whole lot. Name was Cassie, and she used to, you know, run with a hell of girls who, who you know, they used to come through every time we had a party or somebody had a party, they would come through. And you know, this was when I was partying, snoring coke and shit. So, Cassie, she called me one day. She's like, "Yo, guys, come through." I'm like, "Where y'all at?" She's like, "At the Beverly Hills Hotel." I'm like, "The Beverly Hills Hotel? The fuck?" Who paid for that? She was like, we just came up here to meet Shug. And, no, she didn't say Shug. I'm lying. She said, we just came up here to meet Dre and some other dudes. I'm like, what other dudes? She was like, they had blonde hair and tongue rings. And we was, you know, came up here and they let us, like, Uh, suck them off and shit. and, 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 you know, then they left. I don't think it's like, like, like a group like, full of like, like they got them hot, and then they left with the dudes with the rings and the funny color hair and shit. Please stand up. Um, I'm telling you, like this. <laughs> and, and look, we came up there. We ordering lobster, anything we wanted to the suite now. You know what I mean? And, man, these girls was up there. Why would they lie? They talking about sticking fingers in niggas' booties and shit. And all Whoa. sort of shit. On, oh. on everything I love, bro. Thing I love. So when Pac was talking about the homosexual shit with Trey and all that shit, he wasn't lying. Like these dudes really be on some, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. Maybe after you have had sex with so many girls, you, I don't know what hey. the fuck. I can't explain it, bro. Hey, Eddie Murphy, I don't know. Know. Did it, Hey, yo, King. Didn't Jermaine Dupri say that shit about Dr. Dre from before? Like, and plus he like letting bitches play with your booty hoes. Didn't you, I'm telling didn't you, bro. I'm telling you about Dr. Dre. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, bro. I'm trying Niggas to tell like you. Rim, like, that's a, you, call, you, know, you know what they call it? They call it a rim job. That's a rim job. Man. <laughs> that's what they call uh, it. Look, look, look. look. Motherfuckers, this not, is why not. they be mad at me, bro. Like, I don't, I don't feel like no... I don't feel no... no Anybody there? 
Yeah, what's this happening here? Man, I don't know. We're God Drop right, cause off, you motherfucker! What the fuck up? Yeah, I just I'm heard it. I just heard it like a. Yeah, Yo, I just heard a line at? click, and I was like. Yo, can you do? Yeah, I'm here. What the fuck? Yo, Yo God yeah, like a... every time. Yo, this shit never fails. It's like every time when the story gets good, when a guest tells a real good story about the industry, yeah. this yeah, yeah. shit happens. We talk about that all the time, too. That's off the cuff censoring a nigga on the cool. This is we not talked a about Dre. <laughs> we we talked about Dre. Dre. Something happened. He said, he said, you can talk about shoes all day long. Y'all start Dre talking about the red bitches that we still making money off of. I'm telling you. Yo, yo, Gonzo, you there? Hold on, I'm going to try to get him back. Man, yo, they, they said, look, God's not giving us too much goodies. Gonzo got to go. Yo. Off the cuff, you <laughs> You gotta love off the cuff though. You gotta love us. <laughs> they on the guillotine that... this week with Young Jock. Fuck that. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh, Chinchilla oh, 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 yeah. is a chin check that. Jock out there in a little bit. Man, cuz, you know, look, look. You might never just know gangster, gangster rapper, but at the end of the day, I, did, I, but I told King this. When I saw that 